Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and to another video. It's been a little while since I filmed a reading vlog but I'm really excited to be back doing some reading vlogs. I, it is currently Wednesday, the, what day is it today, the 20... 28th of August so we are nearly at the end of August which is crazy um, but I wanted to start off with just mentioning that I am currently reading Hopeless by Elsie Silver for Chestnut Springs Long. The live show for this will be next Saturday I actually need to schedule that and I'm currently 199 pages in and I can see why this is my least favourite. I'm not having a great time with it but I need to get to the end for the live show with myself and Brooklyn from Brooklyn Reads um so it's probably going to be a lower rating than what I gave it previously I'm not having the best time with it but the main point for this reading vlog is myself and Emma from Observing Emma I'll leave her um channel down below um I um, reached out to her and suggested that we could maybe do a, some kind of body read and Emma is actually from Scotland as well and I thought it would be quite a fun idea for us to read um, romances, contemporary romances that are set in Scotland. So I picked out two books that I think um, that we are going to both give a try and read and do reading vlogs for. So I'm going to, I was actually going to put these on my September TBR but I'm just worried I'm not going to have enough time because I've got a massive TBR for the Goddess Complex Readathon which is Beatrice's Readathon and I'll leave a link to Beatrice's channel down below as well. But so I'm going to just start them tonight and I've, I'm able to get the audiobook for one of them which I'm going to start first and do a read, tandem read on my uh, Kindle. Is it tandem read? No, immersion read is the right word. But I'm going to be starting Kilt Trip by Alexand Alexandra Kiley. And this is a contemporary romance set in Scotland. And I think the gist of it is we follow this, uh, our main character who is an American. And she works for a travel company, I believe. And she's never visited Scotland before and I think she ends up going to Scotland to basically run um, like tours in Scotland I think if I remember correctly. I can't remember and then I remembered that the main male character is called Logan he's quite like your average like Scottish guy in a kilt kind of average guy and yeah she sits she uh Addy McRae jet sets around the world anywhere but Scotland but when she's sent on assignment to help a struggling family run to her company in the Highlands and save her own job Addy packs away her emotional baggage and turns on the professional charm. Rugged as the land he loves Logan Sutherland's greatest joy is sharing the beauty of Scotland's hidden gems even if it means a wee bit of red ink on the company's bottom line. The last thing Logan wants is some American expert pushing tourist traps and perpetuating myths about the Loch Ness Monster. Uh, especially when Addie never leaves her desk to experience the country for herself. As they wage an, off an office war, Logan discovers Addie's, Addie's secret connection to Scotland, a handful of faded Polaroids of her late mother. Hoping for a truce, he creates a private tour to the places in the pictures to help Addie find closure and appreciate the enchantment in less travelled destinations, never expecting the off-limits attraction sparking between them. But Addie's contract is almost up and magic won't pay the bills. They can't afford distractions, but how can Addie do her job if she hasn't, if she hasn't explored all Scotland and Logan has to offer? So that actually sounds really, really cute. And yeah, I'm excited to give it a try. So I've got the audiobook on BookBeat ready to go and I've also got it on my Kindle. And the other book that I'm planning to read is uh, Beyond the Thistles by Samantha Young, which is the first book in this um, romance series that's set in the Highlands in Scotland. And we're following a main character who is a bodyguard and he ends up getting entangled with a young single mum who's running away from I think a, quite a toxic relationship she's got a young daughter and he ends up getting involved with her and there's some kind of romance involved so those are my two main books I'm going to be reading in this vlog but yeah I think I'm going to give a little listen and start to listen and read Kilt Trip this evening and I'll give you an update with how far I get into it. Um, I will be able to go to bed a little bit later tonight because I'm, I'm working from home tomorrow so I've got a little bit. I don't want to get up, up as early tomorrow which is nice. So I will come back in and let you know what my initial thoughts are in a little bit. Zafra presents Kilt Trip, written by Alexandra Kylie and read by Kate Handford and Alex C. Stewart. 
Chapter 1 Addie McRae's internal compass was irreparably damaged. For all the traveling she did, and the relative ease of navigating a city with English street signs, Edinburgh's jigsaw puzzle of grey-toned buildings and twisting streets left her head spinning. Grumpy librarian, I'm pretty sure, is a love interest. I could have honestly made that up, but I know it's set in Britain. We have a witch, and she is, like, hired to help these kids something. Like I said, there's a grumpy librarian, there's fan family, there's romance, and all the crazy vibes. So I'm not going to read the synopsis for this one, because I do want to go into this one not knowing too much. And I am really excited to read it. I'm pretty sure I do have this downloaded on audio, so I might actually audio book this one. And I am actually quite eager to start it. Because I just feel like it's going to be very wholesome, really heartwarming, and just really cosy and like magical. So I cannot wait to pick this one up. If you have read it, please let me know your thoughts and if you think I will like it. But yes, I am pretty sure I'll pick this one up on audio and I am predicting it to be a five star read. So next we have A Romantic Seat, which is The Witch Collector by Carissa Weeks. I've heard so many things about this book and I've been meaning to pick it up for so long. Obviously, Hey guys, it is nearly about 10pm in the evening for me and I'm going to be going to bed soon but I thought I better come in and give you my first update and initial thoughts for Kilt Trip by Alexander Alexander Alexandra Kylie honestly I cannot speak um I managed to get 57 pages into this and so far so good I'm 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 liking it so far it's given me the movie if you've seen the movie Wild Child where she's like a spoiled American heiress and she has to go travel to an English boarding school and it's like she doesn't really know anything and she's not really lived out in the world on her own before. I kind of get that vibe with Addie who's the main character so she's an American that's basically come to Scotland to work on uh, for this company that does like tours around like the Scottish Highlands that kind of thing and Logan is one of the tour guides that works for this company but Addie's never really explored Scotland before she's kind of like a very much a workaholic she doesn't really explore the places that she works like she's just basically just wants to just get there and just do her job and leave basically and I think Logan's basically going to show her the kind of area that she's in and like basically like show her the sights and the the wonders of like the Scottish Highlands and that kind of thing and we've kind of found out a little bit of her backstory her mum has passed away and I definitely think that she's got some kind of Scottish roots because um like her mum is even called Heather so she's definitely got some like Scottish roots um like she was always talking about the Scottish Highlands and uh that kind of thing so I'm assuming that we'll get a bit more about that but so far so good I'm liking it so I think I'm definitely going to try and read some more tomorrow maybe listen to a bit of the audio book I'm working from home tomorrow but I do read a lot quicker when I'm reading physically to be honest but I'll give it a try anyway but so far so good um I, I'm enjoying it it's very very like cutesy kind of cutesy contemporary romance and I think I'm definitely having a much better time with this than I am with Hopeless by Elsie Silver um which I am currently reading for Chestnut Springs Long which and thank god that this is the final book in this series because I'm not if I mean if I wasn't reading it for a read long I would just I would have just DNF it even though it is a reread for me I just I'm not enjoying this one at all and I can definitely see why it's my least favourite so we're basically following Bo Eaton and he's basically the war veteran the soldier and he has been away on tours uh, fighting uh, and he's basically back home but he's got a lot of um, PTSD kind of um, trauma going on so that's a if that's a trigger for you um, that's mentioned in here and basically we meet Bailey who works in the local bar in Chester Springs and she is a member of the other kind of rival family who are the Jensens that basically live on the other ranch on the side of their fence and they don't get on and Bailey's basically deemed as like the, in a polite word, kind of like the the slag, kind of the bite, like the one who's always like up for it and all that kind of stuff and she wants to kind of get away from that reputation so Bo randomly when they meet in a bar um and he gets a chat to her and he feels he can open up to her he comes up with the idea that um in order for her for her reputation to get better that they um fake date and get basically married and pretend to get engaged and she's going to be and he's going to be her fake fiance basically but I'm just not 
feel in this relationship. Bo's not my favourite character. It's like he's barely been in the other books. He gets mentioned a few times. Bailey we only met once in Flawless at the very start of the season. She's never ever mentioned again until uh, Hopeless basically. So I just like, I don't feel like I know the characters. I'm not invested in the relationship. And it's like... I don't like the nicknames they give each other. I find it quite cringy. And some of this, like, the talk, the communication between them, it's all sex-related. And I'm just like, I'm not interested. I'm not interested. Um, and I'm just like, I just don't feel this relationship whatsoever. But I'm um, obviously, for the live show, I'm going to finish it to the end. I mean, it is a quick read. I've managed to get But it's like, I pick it up and I'm not interested in picking it back up again i just I, if i if i was reading it for the first time i probably would have dnf'd it to be honest at this point but if i wasn't reading it for a live show i would i would dnf it but i can't unfortunately so that's that so i'll, I'll probably carry on with a little bit more of that tomorrow but i'm gonna say good night for now and i'll check in with you all in the morning Good morning everyone, it is now Thursday, it is just about 8 o'clock in the morning. I woke up about 20 minutes ago and I'm working from home again uh, today so I'm going to go get logged in for work in a little bit but I wanted to give you an update. I, um, I think I mentioned that I'm 57 pages into kilt trip so this I'm going to focus on this for today but I think my main goal that I want to try and do is get hopeless by Elsie Silver finished I'm just not having a good time with this one and I just want it done so I am oh, drop the book and I am currently on page 204 so I'm nearly at the halfway mark I think so um but I wanted to quickly show you actually my really really cute bookmark that I got without losing my place there we go but it is basically a Taylor Swift um, bookmark. It's got the books and all of her different albums on it. And it's so cute. And it's from a, an Etsy shop. Or they've got a website called um, GG and Bo. And I really, really liked their um, bookmark design. So I got this one. And I got a Bell from Beauty and the Beast one. And I also got an Anthony Bridgerton one. Which I am obsessed with. This is the Taylor Swift one. So it's got... Um, Torch Reports, Department, Midnights, Evermore, Folklore, Lover, 1989, Reputation, Red, um, Fearless, Speak Now. It's basically got all our albums and I really, really like it. And it's like on a creamy coloured bookmark and it's like really, really nice cardboard as well. It makes quite a nice noise. So yeah, I'm really happy this one. So I think my plan is to try and finish um, Hopeless uh today and I actually need to schedule the live show for me and Brooklyn so that'll be hopefully the first um next Saturday the I need to actually double check on my calendar so that should be the 7th of September so I need to get that scheduled and that will be the last um Chestnut Springs long live show which is crazy I can't believe that we're at the final book already and all the live shows are done but I've had a really, really good time hosting this so yeah that's kind of my plan for today and then after that I'm gonna just focus on kilt trip so I don't think it'll take me that long to be honest because I managed to get through to page 57 last night so I think it'll be quite a quick read and so far so good I am liking it and I'm really really excited to try Beyond the Thistles by Spantheon because I know Steph has read it and I think she gave it four stars I think she really liked it and it is a series as well so if I like it I would maybe like to continue on with the seas because I've not really read a lot of romances that are set in Scotland which is crazy so I'm really quite glad that I'm doing this kind of reading challenge with Emma so that's kind of my plan for, for today so I'm gonna read a little bit of Hopeless and try and get to halfway this morning and then I'll read it more try and finish it on my lunch break and yeah um I think and I think Steph might be sprinting today actually so I'll have her on in the back while she's doing Patreon sprints so I think um I'll tune into those uh have her on in the background and yeah it'll just be quite chill day at work I've not got a lot going on at the moment really um just bits and pieces here and there and yeah so I will come back and check in with you all a little bit later Hey guys, it is a lot later on now, it is just about 6pm in the evening. I finished work about an hour ago 
and I did make some progress on Kilt Trip and I got to page 114 so I'm 33% in according to my Kindle and I am having a good time with it. It's definitely a lot more heavy on the grief than what I was expecting. There's quite a few characters that have like lost a loved one which I wasn't expecting but I really like Addy the main character. I think she's really good and Logan I think he's an absolute sweetheart I really like him and he's starting to kind of show Addy all of the various like um spots in the Scottish Highlands and um it's kind of just gone from there and overall I'm having a really good time with it um I didn't really make any more progress on Hopeless by Elsie Silver I'm just like, I just want this book done. So I think this is, that'll probably be my main focus tonight is to try and get that done. But I, so I did actually get some book mail today, um, a pre-order that came in and it's by an author that I have read from previously and I am really, really excited. It's another dark uh, fairy tale retelling and I am obsessed with this cover. It is absolutely gorgeous. But this one is The Crimson Crown. Yeah, The Crimson Crown by Heather Walter, who wrote Malice, which was a dark um, Sleeping Beauty retelling. And this one is actually a dark Snow White retelling, I think, with witches. So that sounds really up my street. So definitely perfect for spooky season, I think. And this cover is just so stunning mirror mirror on the wall who's the most wicked of them all so i'm really really excited i have not read the synopsis so let's do that together um the book is absolutely massive it's quite chunky to hold so i'll just take off the dust jacket and read the synopsis for you guys Okay guys, so I found, actually found the synopsis on Goodreads just because it's easier for me to hold in that massive big hardback. So on Goodreads it basically says, uh, mirror mirror on the wall, who's the wickedest of them all? Snow White's Dark Queen tells her side of the story in this first in the first book of a queer witchy duology that reimagines the classic fairy tale from the author of Malice. An alluring, vengeful origin story that brings tremendous dimension to a classic fairy tale by Chloe Gong. And I've, all, I've read from Chloe Gong before, so that's quite positive. So, legends tell of a witch who became a queen, the heartless villain in the story of Snow White. But now the Wicked Queen is stepping out of Snow White's shadow to become the heroine of her own legend. Her real once upon a time begins when she is just Aelith, a young witch who lives in the forest with her coven. The witches practice their magic in secret, hiding from the White King and his brutal war against witchcraft. There, Aelith encounters an unlikely figure from her past, Jaquita, Jaquita, I don't know how you pronounce that, a witch who once held Aelith's heart and betrayed her. As events at the palace escalate, Aelith finds herself caught in the web of the White King, whose dark charisma is as dangerous as the sinister force that seems to be hunting the palace, and perhaps even Aelith herself. With the threat of discovery looming, Aelith and Jaquita must set aside the wounds of their past and work together to survive. As she uncovers the secrets of the White Court and those of her own heart, Aelith must find the strength to transform into someone she's never imagined she could be, a powerful witch, the very wickedest of them all, book one in the Crimson Crown series. So that sounds amazing. It really, really does. I love when dark fairy tales take um, it more from the villain's perspective and it's like you learn to root for them a lot more so kind of like the, the live action Maleficent, the Sleeping Beauty remake, live action kind of remake but it was from Maleficent's perspective I loved that so much and that's why I really really liked Malice by Heather Walter because it was such a really good twist on the Sleeping Beauty kind of story but the Crimson Crown, that just sounds so so good and I've read a dark sleep uh, Snow White retelling recently, Sleep White Death. I liked it. I gave it four stars but I wanted more. I wanted a bit more from it but I think the Crimson Crown by Heather Walter could be the one to do it for me and I'm really really excited for this one so that's going to be definitely put on my um October TBR for sure. I mean I, if I could get it in September for the Goddess Complex retelling that would be great because it is a retelling but I can push it into October because it is witchy so I would be able to count it for spooky season but it sounds amazing. It really, really does. So I think my plan for this evening is to try and get to over halfway through Kilt Trip and start and be on the thistles tomorrow I think. I'm going to take my Kindle into work with me tomorrow. Um, 
but yeah, that's kind of the plan. But I wanted to share that little bit of book mail with you. I've got a vintage parcel to post out tomorrow. Um, I've also got some actual books to send to Amanda. She's um um going to buy some of my special editions that I'm not really wanting anymore. So I'm going to get that organised. But yeah, that's kind of the plan. So I'll come back in and check in with you all when I've got an update for you. Hello my loves, it is just after 9pm, 10 past 9, I'll be going to bed soon but I have been doing a bit of reading and I am now up to page 224 of Kilt Trips, so I'm 64% of the way through this and I am having a good time with it. I mean it's not like the most groundbreaking thing I've ever read but I am having a good time with it. I like Addie, the main character. I think she's really, really good and I do like Logan. I think he's a sweetheart and we've got to the point now where um, Logan, um, Addie was showing photos that she has of her mum um, and these certain places in the Highlands that she's visited and she wants to know more about these places where her mum was in the photo. So Logan has offered to basically take her to these places that are in the photos with um heather um addy's mum and I, I think it's definitely there's probably uh, going to be a romance that happens between them and it's good i think it's it's feeling a three star at the moment it's not like groundbreaking romance but i'm having a good time with it um i haven't made any more progress on hopeless so i think i might just take this into work with me tomorrow and just try and finish it there because I just want it to be done to be honest and then tomorrow evening I am doing evening sprints and I think Amanda's going to join me on those to round off Magical Kingdom Readathon and then I'll be hosting um, afternoon sprints tomorrow and I think we'll go for a few hours um, on Saturday as well to basically round out the readathon and then the 1st of September will be on Sunday so I'll be able to start my September TBR which is quite exciting so I think my plan is I was going to try and find an audiobook for Beyond the, Beyond the Thistles but I haven't had much luck actually um, I had a look on Evland and I don't think I can get an audiobook if I just quickly have a look Beyond the thistles well maybe no I can't get it on Everand I don't think I can get it on Bookbeat either I may have a look on Audible and see if there's an audiobook for it because I think I've still got a credit left um beyond Oh, it's on Audible. I can get it on Audible. And I've got one credit left, so I don't mind using a credit, to be honest. Well, that's good then. It's it's a 10 and a 10 hours, 12 minutes audiobook, so I could probably speed it up and get through it quite quickly, fingers crossed. So yeah, that's kind of my plan for tomorrow. And it's Friday tomorrow, thank goodness. End of another week. And yeah, it will be the end of the Magical Kingdom Museum, which is crazy. I have a rough idea of which team is potentially going to win, but I am keeping the form open until next Wednesday, and then we'll do the announcement for that afterwards. But yeah, so that's my plan, and yeah, I will be going to bed soon, but I'm going to try and get through another good chunk of Kill Trip and maybe even finish it tonight. But I might come back and let you know if I do or I might just be an update tomorrow when I get back from work. So that's the plan and I will say goodnight for now and I'll catch up with you all tomorrow. Hi guys, it is currently Saturday. Apologies for not updating you last night. I was just so tired and I was having an early night so I've completely forgot to update you but I have got reading updates. I did finish Kilt Trip by Alexandra Kiley and overall I think I'm probably going to give it a 3.5 star only because, um, yeah, it wasn't like one of those romances that blows you away. It was, it was cute. It was really cute. But I wasn't expecting the amount of, 
like grief in there that's dealt with it's a lot of grief heavy so if that's a trigger for you I would be wary because it is mentioned grief is mentioned quite a lot but I did like the relationship between Addie and Logan I thought that was really really sweet um there was a bit of miscommunication towards the end which I was a bit kind of like uh, I didn't love it but overall I had a good time with it I would definitely recommend it if you want a really cute quick fuzzy romance but it is quite heavy on the grief side of it so I would be wary going in but overall I think a 3.5 star so that's one book down for this video and I have actually been doing a big huge sort out in my room clearing a lot of stuff out that I don't use um doing some unhaul bits for my books I think as well so I've got a bit more space and stuff which is good news I'll be donating them and selling some of my um special decisions on Vinted so that's all good news but I am determined to, to finish Hopeless by Elsie Silverstein so I can get this off of my list but I am going to be starting Beyond the Thistles um, right now and hopefully finish it this evening try and read it in one go before uh, the Goddess Complex readathon starts tomorrow with, with um, Beatrice doing kickoff sprints I have been watching qualifying and Lando got pole in Monza it's an Italian Grand Prix and Lando got pole so I'm really happy for him so fingers crossed it's another win for him because he won last week's race as well which is good news but yeah so that's kind of my plan so I'll come back in and check with you all a little bit later this one I have read is one from Chocolate. Oh, I can never say that very well. I say it really well in my head. Patroclus. Patroclus. Pat Patrick. <laughs> we'll say Patroclus. Um, and Achilles. Um, no, Achilles in the title, Laura. So it follows Patroclus when he is sent to live with Achilles. Hey guys, it's a lot later on now and I do have some reading updates for you. I did eventually manage to finish Hopeless by Elsie Silver. It got a 2.5 star. I didn't have a good time with this one, which is such a shame um because I adored the rest of the series but I just, fe I just felt that the last bit kind of just... Yeah, it wasn't for me, but I know that Brooklyn has actually finished it and she absolutely loved it. So I think it's just preference, really. Um, and there were some people that have actually just DNF the series and haven't read the last book. So I think it's definitely going to be a mix of opinions when it comes to the live show next week. When, uh, well, this week coming, this Saturday coming, because I actually need to schedule that. So uh, that's on my list to get done. But it's done and 2.5 stars. And that's Chess That Springs Along done. It's done, which is absolutely crazy. It's absolutely crazy. So I just wanted to say in this vlog a massive, massive thank you. In particular to Brooklyn from Brooklyn Reads, Brittany from Brittany Loves Reading, and also Leandra from Leandra the TBR Zero. All three of you guys helped me out with Chestnut Springs Along. It was my first proper read along. I just wanted to say I love you guys so much. I absolutely loved your support and helping me with doing the live shows chatting about all of these books and I know that's definitely been a mix of opinions but it's been so much fun and the amount of people that have done Chester Springs Long has been absolutely amazing so I just wanted to say a massive massive thank you to every single person that's taken part in the read long if it's the first time you've read the series or if you re if you reread it with us like myself it's been so much fun and I hope that you enjoyed it and if you are interested in taking part in the next read along that I'm going to do, I have, we are going to be starting the A Court of Thorns and Roses series by Sarah J Mass. Sorry, I've got hair in my face. <laughs> A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Mass starting in September. So pretty much the whole month of September. If you want to join in with us for the read along, I am going to be joined by Amanda from Black, Black Clothes Books and also Laura from The Book Hermit. They're going to be on the live shows with me. This is an absolute reread for me. I reread the series almost every year. I absolutely adore it. But Amanda has never read the series before, so this is going to be interesting to see what she thinks of it. And Laura has read the series, so it'll be great to get a mix of opinions on the series from them. I could chat about those books all day long, so I'm um, definitely in my comfort zone anyway. But if anyone's interested, I'll pop the link to the read along discord if anybody's interested in taking part so we're going to do Akatar in september akamath october 
Aqua War in November, uh, a Court of Horse and Starlight in December and January at Court of Silver Flames. So it's going to be so much fun and I can't wait to do the live shows with the guys. So guys, so I've started the second book that I'm reading in this vlog, which is Beyond the, th the, Beyond the Thistles, I can't speak, by Samantha Young. And this is the first book in the Highland series. So this is a series and I am currently 21% into this and so far so good. I'm liking it. It's definitely, this one we're following Walker who is a bodyguard, an ex-bodyguard. He's like an ex-marine and he lives in the Scottish Highlands pretty much. He's quite a loner, um, doesn't really um, have a lot of friends and stuff. And then we also meet Sloane who's our main character and uh, she was in quite a six like a successful job and she has this ex that is quite violent he's kind of like a gangster i would say he's like a, her ex is quite heavily involved in crime and she's got a young daughter by him and he doesn't want anything to do with a young daughter called Callie and she's ended up fleeing from her ex because of a situation where she was involved and she's ended up running away and ended up in the Highlands in the same town as Walker and he's kind of got roped into her uh, kind of situation and he's offered to basically, because he was an ex-bodyguard, ex marine to basically kind of look out for her and protect her and uh, also she's got a young daughter as well so I'm assuming that there will be some kind of relationship that forms between them but I wasn't expecting, so yeah I wasn't expecting like the kind of thrillery aspect to it but I forgot to say that Sloane the female mate MC she is American as well so what are the chances that the last book I read has an American female character that, that comes to Scotland but I think I'm liking this one a little bit more I would say and she's um she lived in Cal California and tells her to get away from her ex her and her daughter have um come to the Scottish Highlands and she's moved into like this little cottage with her and uh, she's got a passion for baking I think so I think she's gonna try and set up her own little bakery shop and uh Walker who's the grumpy sunshine I would say and she's like she's trying to kind of seduce him because she's got a little bit of a crush on him like when she meets him and uh, to give him like loads of bait goods and stuff I think oh, that's really really cute so I'm excited to see where this one goes actually so um I'm gonna try and get to halfway and then I'll give you an update um it is nearly quarter past nine I've got nothing to get up for so I can stay up a bit later tonight which is nice um or I was in the mood to play on my switch so I might maybe do that as well so I don't know but yeah it's just gonna be chilled evening and I've managed to get um a little new bookcase actually so I've got a little new bookcase underneath my window so I'll have um some a, bit, a, little, a little bit more space to put some books in which is nice but yeah, so that's my plan for this evening. So I'll come back in and check in with you all when I've got another update for you. Hey guys, it is currently Sunday. I woke up about an hour ago. It's just after 12 now. I've had a shower and got dressed. I've got my Hocus Pocus sweatshirt on. I'm obsessed with this. I love it so much. But I do have a really positive reading update. I managed to finish Beyond the Thistles by Samantha Young. This was five stars. I absolutely loved it. I really, really enjoyed it a lot more than, than I thought it was going to. It's definitely more of a romantic suspense with the more thriller elements to it, but I absolutely loved it as the book went on. The romance, chef's kiss. It was so, so good. Sloane and Walker have my whole heart now. I just loved Walker. I need a walker in my life. He is just adorable. And as you go further on in the book, you definitely get a lot more of his backstory. Um, and um, when he was a bodyguard previously, there was a situation that happened that he ended up having to kind of leave the town and uh, move somewhere else. But obviously he, want, he wanted to move back to where he came from. And also a bit more about his past as well which was quite traumatic as well there is mention of domestic abuse on page so if that's a trigger for you I would be wary but overall 
it was just so good. I'm definitely going to continue on with the series. It's the Highland series and I am quite excited for the next book and who we're following in that book as well. So I'm really excited. I loved Sloane. I thought she was amazing. She's such a strong female character, a single mum as well, so single mum rep uh, as well. Callie, her daughter, I just, I'm obsessed with her. She was absolutely adorable and it did actually get really, really tense, especially when we found out that Nathan, who is Sloane's ex-partner, who's basically like a gangster, he's involved in crime and stuff and there was of like I think I mentioned in the beginning of that the situation that Sloane finds herself in, he's basically trying to sexually assault this young girl so that is on page, so that's trigger for you, do be wary. Um, and it does get quite violent, And uh, but she then realises that he's actually in the same uh, town as, uh, like, in the area, and she's just, she's freaking out, she's obviously trying to protect Callie, her daughter, and Walker is um, trying to help Sloan out, and uh, he basically becomes like a father figure for Callie, and their relationship is just adorable, and it's, it does get really, really tense towards the end of it, and I wasn't expecting to go where it did, but overall I had an amazing time with this one, so this is, I would 100% recommend this first book in a series um if you want if you are looking for a romance it's set in scottish highlands that's a romantic suspense kind of with the thriller elements as well it does get really tense um but there are also some triggers so do be wary going in but five stars i absolutely loved it and this is a great recommendation from steph i think she gave it four stars but i think she really enjoyed it as well so i'm definitely going to continue on with the series it's on i read on kindle limited so if you want to give it a go it's on kindle limited so you can read it for nothing and i would 100 i loved samantha young's writing i thought her writing was really easy to follow the steamy scenes oh my god not cringy whatsoever i just when you find with some romances I find the sex scenes to be a little bit cringy and I'm kind of rolling my eyes a bit but this was the set the scene scenes were written so well Oof. but overall I absolutely adored it so I'm going to wrap up this vlog and give you my final thoughts and ratings for both for the books that I read uh, this week So I am going to just briefly wrap up what I read in this vlog and my final kind of thoughts. So I will mention in this vlog that I did finish Hopeless by Elsie Silver. This was a 2.5 star for me. I didn't enjoy it on a reread. I found I didn't love Bo and Bailey who we were following. I just found the dialogue between them was really cringy and like quite sexual related as well and I thought that there was no need for it. I do appreciate that there is um, PTSD rep in here, so if that's a trigger for you, it is mentioned in there, and I think that was done quite well. That was only positive. I found that the PTSD side of it with Bo being in the army, um, I thought was done quite well. But overall, I was just, I didn't care. I didn't enjoy, I just don't think fake dating for me, it's a favourite romance trope of mine. If it's done really, really well, I do quite enjoy it, but if it's not done so well, I don't love it. So that was a bit of a letdown for me, a 2.5 stars for that one. The next I read, uh, I finished Kill Trip by Alexandra Kiley, and this was a 3.5 star. I overall enjoyed it. It didn't blow me away, as a, it's a quick contemporary romance set in Scotland. Um, yeah, it definitely gave me the mo the feels of Wild Child, the movie, like an American who's like doesn't really know anything, comes goes to like a British boarding school and ends up getting sucked in by the culture and finding out about her mum and stuff like that. And it was quite grief heavy, the book I felt I felt. So if that's a trigger for you, it is grief has dealt quite a lot in this book. But I quite the romance was fine between Addy and Logan. I thought that was quite cute. It's very fast paced, very quick read. So overall, a 3.5 stars for that one. And then lastly, I just finished um, Beyond the Thistles by Samantha Young. And that was a five star. I absolutely adored it. Going to continue on with the series. Walker and Sloan have my whole heart. Walker is just, I just, I need him in my life. I really, really do. 
oh, it's just so good. I just like, and the way that like the Scottish Highlands was depicted, I thought it was really well done. I've never actually been to the Scottish Highlands, but it makes me want to go and visit the Scottish Highlands. I've always wanted to visit like that area. It just always looks so beautiful and I can't wait to continue on with the series. It's on Kindle Unlimited if you want to pick it up. I would 100% recommend that you pick it up. So I just want to say a massive thank you to Emma from Observing Emma from doing this buddy read with me. I'm sure her video will be up very soon, but when it is up, I will leave a link to it in the box down below. So if you want to go and subscribe to Emma, I would 100% recommend it. She's absolutely lovely and her videos are so good. I would 100% recommend that you go and subscribe to her. So yeah, if you liked this video, give me a like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. Let me know if you've got any romances, Scottish romances that you would like to recommend to me. I would definitely be keen on trying some more um, romances set in Scotland so if you've got any other recommendations for me pop them in the comments down below but yeah I will hopefully see you all in my next video very very soon bye guys